Welcome back to The Game Collection. I'm Super Derek, and this summer I'll be playing through and reviewing in depth each entry in the Mother series, in what I call the Mother of All Summers. And today, I'm kicking things off by talking about Mother, or Earthbound Beginnings as it is known in the West. I've played four different versions of this game in preparation for this review, and I've got some thoughts. So get comfortable, and let's take a look at this incredible little 8-bit RPG. Mother was the name of Nintendo's Famicom RPG that came out only in Japan in 1989. It's unique for a plethora of reasons, but perhaps at the time, its biggest draw was the creator of the game, Shigesato Itoi. Even before the Mother series, Itoi's name was well known among the Japanese people as a charismatic essayist, lyricist, and all-around famous creative type. I don't think it would be wholly inaccurate to compare him to a Japanese Mark Twain or maybe Paul McCartney. Then president of Nintendo, Hiroshi Yamauchi, was such a fan of Itoi's work that he actually approached Itoi and proposed the idea of starting a game development company and Yamauchi would invest in it. Ape Inc. was founded in March of 1989 with Itoi as the CEO and would make waves in the industry for years to come, ultimately transforming into Creatures Inc. and developing several Pokemon titles including the trading card game. Ape's first title was Mother in Japan. Mother and its subsequent entries all sprouted from the mind of Shigesato Itoi to the point where even in the West, his name is inseparably linked from the series and most fans know this man's name. His take on the Japanese role-playing game eschewed several staples of the genre to that point, perhaps most obviously at the time by planting the player in a world not too dissimilar from our own modern era instead of medieval or futuristic fantasy settings, and by including a lot more absurdist humor in the game while not quite venturing into parody territory. Mother is the predecessor to Earthbound on the SNES. It was released in July of 1989 in Japan for the Famicom, and we very nearly got this game in the West on the Nintendo Entertainment System, but during the final stages of a Western release, Nintendo of America pulled the plug. And when I say at the very last stages, I mean they had a finished English localization already done, with a working prototype and everything. But in the end, all we got was the follow-up, Mother 2, which Nintendo renamed to Earthbound in the West. Think of this sort of like how Squaresoft released Final Fantasy IV in the West as Final Fantasy II. So when that working English prototype was eventually found and a ROM of it was dumped onto the internet in 1998, modders renamed the game from Earthbound, that's two words, to Earthbound Zero to clarify that this comes before Earthbound on Super Nintendo. And for the longest time, the Earthbound Zero ROM was how the vast, vast majority of Earthbound fans had to enjoy Mother. However, during the blink of an eye that was the Wii U's lifespan, Nintendo of America had the ingenious idea of finally throwing Earthbound fans a bone by officially releasing Earthbound fans' second most requested game to the West. Mother received an exclusive port to the Wii U and was renamed to Earthbound Beginnings. So to recap, Mother, Earthbound, that's two words, Earthbound Zero, and Earthbound Beginnings are all referring to the same game here. Is everybody clear on that? Good? Good. So, the main four releases that I played for this review are a bit of the original Japanese release, the entire official release of Earthbound Beginnings on Wii U, the entire Mother 25th Anniversary fan mod using a reproduction cartridge, and a bit of the reproduction cartridge of Mother 1 Plus 2 on Game Boy Advance. I did the legwork to help you decide which version to play, and I'll go ahead and tell you that right now, the version that I would probably recommend to most of you is Mother 25th Anniversary Edition Fan Mod, and I'll explain why as we go. But for starters, let's cover what each of these four versions brings to the table. 
Mother on Famicom is the original version. It's entirely in Japanese, and if you can read Japanese, this would probably be the way to go if you're a real purist because every other version features significant changes. Earthbound Beginnings on the Wii U is a straight-up port of the NES version that we very nearly got here in the West. The port features an appropriate 1989 localization complete with a small bit of censorship, and they added a run button that speeds things up on the world map. If you're a purist who cannot read Japanese, this is the closest thing that you can get to the original release. Also important to note is it is only available on the Wii U and also is the only way you can financially show Nintendo that there is still a market for the mother fandom in the West. So regardless of which version you choose to play, I recommend that you buy this version of the game. It's less than $10. If enough of you guys do this, who knows? Maybe if you're lucky, Nintendo will let you buy Nintendo DLC for Smash Bros someday. <sighs> Next up, we've got Mother 1 Plus 2 on Game Boy Advance fan translation by Tomato, who is probably most famous because he does what Nintendo don't by helping localize Mother 3 for Western audiences. But he also worked on porting this release of the game that we also never got in the West. This version features a completely new, high quality English localization, lacks the run button since that was an America only thing, and removes tile based movement, which helps modernize the feel of the game a bit. Unfortunately, as is par for the course, the Game Boy Advance port suffers a bit in the sound department, though notably not as bad as the port of Earthbound or Mother 2 on that same cartridge. Additionally, you can opt in to a rebalance of the game by equipping a ring you find in Nintendo's room at the beginning of the game, or ignore it to leave things at stock settings. If you're a bit of a purist and want to keep the look of the original release, but also enjoy an updated localization and may or may not be interested in a more balanced experience, but don't mind the sound issues so much the Game Boy Advance release may be for you. And finally, the 25th anniversary edition of Mother is a fan hack of Earthbound Zero, which replaces the title screen art, overhauls the battle system and menu borders, replaces the main character sprites with more Earthbound-like ones, replaces some of the enemy battle sprites with more detailed sprites, and brings Tomato's new translation from Game Boy Advance back to the Nintendo Entertainment System. The world map is also completely overhauled to be far more informative. The overworld palette has also been updated to be more colorful and vibrant, and various visual cues have also been added to certain areas to help streamline navigation. Furthermore, the enemy and cash rebalancing ring from the Game Boy Advance release has been baked into the core experience of this game. No need to equip a ring or anything. The music is untouched, because why mess with perfection? but purists will probably be turned off by the visual changes and the inability to opt out of the rebalance fixes. However, in my subjective experience, this is what I would recommend to most newcomers from Earthbound, and I'll talk a little more about that as we go. Mother begins with a little exposition dump via text. In the early 1900s, a couple disappeared, George and Maria. Several years later, George reappeared but refused to answer to where he was or what he had been doing. His wife, Maria, never returned. I suppose that wasn't at all suspicious back in the old days. The year is now 1988, and Ninten, the great-grandson of George, is just hanging out in his room when all of the sudden objects in the house start going berserk. Some sort of poltergeist appears to be wreaking havoc. Luckily, Ninten smashed the animated lamps and creepy doll, saving his sisters and mother from the disembodied onslaught. Ninten's father calls him up and mentions that Ninten's great-grandfather had been studying such phenomena, and perhaps Ninten ought to try sorting things out. So naturally, Ninten locates his great-grandfather's diary and hits the road saving the day from town to town, gradually discovering melodies hidden throughout the world and learning about a nasty being threatening the Earth. There are points in the game where Shigesato Itoi's humor shines through, but it doesn't shine quite as brightly as it does in Earthbound on the Super Nintendo, but you can see the little sparks of ideas twinkling faintly as you read through NPC dialogue, and this is true of both localizations of the game. I had found this aspect of the game extremely fascinating as a huge Earthbound fan. The more I played Earthbound Beginnings, the more parallels I couldn't help but draw between the games. In some ways, it feels like Earthbound Beginnings is the prototype of Earthbound, or like Earthbound was the refined reboot of Mother. 
The stories that they tell are completely different, but both center around collecting melodies and confronting an incomprehensible evil force that is affecting the hearts of people and animals across the land. The characters of Mother are pretty bare bones, which I think is pretty much to be expected of an NES RPG of the era. Ninten is the silent protagonist, Lloyd is a nerdy sort of kid who gets picked on for being a weakling and acts impulsively. One of the first things he actually tells you when you meet him is that he stole some explosives. Anna joins your party in search of her mother. She also happens to be in love with Ninten for some reason, and there's a sweet moment where she confesses her love without any real lead up. All of the characters are actually mostly silent, so this could actually be the second or third thing she says after joining the party. For the era, I'm not saying this to criticize so much as to help set expectations for anyone interested in giving this game a go for the first time today. I don't often like to use words like clone to describe a game, so instead I'll say that Mother drew heavy inspiration from Dragon Quest II, released in 1987, and possibly Dragon Quest III, which was released in 1988, at least from a gameplay perspective. For comparison, Final Fantasy and Final Fantasy II were also released in 1987 and 1988 respectively in Japan, and each departs from the Dragon Quest style far more than Mother did. In Mother, enemies are displayed during combat from a first-person perspective, and you don't see your characters on screen. You're instead shown your stats at the bottom and the menu from which to select party member actions. If you like the NES Dragon Warrior titles, you will feel right at home here with Mother. It's a tried and true formula, and Mother handles its combat competently. Battles with enemies occur randomly in this game, and the encounter rate can swing wildly. Sometimes you can walk long stretches without a single encounter, and in other areas the battles are seemingly non-stop. And what's most bizarre is that the same area can have a different encounter rate just by entering a house and exiting again. For instance, I was attempting to grind on a mountain for a while, but just wasn't encountering any enemies. So I stayed the night at a house and went outside and was immediately inundated with battles. I would be remiss to not mention that some areas toward the end of the game are pretty brutal. Allegedly, there are a couple areas that weren't thoroughly playtested, which makes the endgame enemies far more powerful than they really needed to be. I suppose that's something else that Mother has in common with Dragon Warrior 2. This aspect was alleviated substantially in the 25th anniversary and Game Boy Advance translation if you use that aforementioned Easy Ring, and it's these endgame areas that give Mother its grindy reputation. Outside of combat is where I think Mother truly distinguishes itself. The vast world of Mother, for the most part, retains its sense of scale throughout the game. You don't traverse between towns using an overworld map. Instead, your adventure into the wilderness between towns is seamless, and that feels pretty special in a game of this era. Immersive might not be the word for an 8-bit title, but I think at the very least it's neat to be able to traverse the world on the same scale that you would traverse a town and enjoy the details of the countryside. Another feather in the cap of Mother is that this game is where homes and other buildings established that three-quarter perspective which gives buildings a sense of depth which would later be carried forward into Earthbound. Further helping establish that depth, Mother also features 8-directional movement, which was very forward-thinking for an NES-era RPG. Movement is still grid-based on the NES, but if you're playing Mother on the Game Boy Advance release, the game was updated to have pixel-based movement which could help it feel more fluid. I will say that because of that 8-directional movement, playing Earthbound Beginnings on my Wii U using the analog stick actually felt far more natural compared to other tile-based movement RPGs, which never feel right using an analog stick. The original graphics of Mother were ahead of their time, but I don't believe that they've aged as well as some even later NES titles, which is why the 25th anniversary edition of Mother overhauled several character sprites, enemy sprites, and the menu system. I personally prefer the visuals of the Anniversary Edition, but I did grow to embrace the look of the original sprites more as I played the Wii U release of Earthbound Beginnings. In the audio department, unless you've been watching this review on mute, you know that this game was an auditory treat. There are so many songs on Mother that would get extended renditions on the SNES release of Earthbound, and because I already have that emotional attachment to Earthbound's music, this had a direct line to my heartstrings. It's been an enjoyable experience hearing the 8-bit originals on the iconic NES sound chip. It's almost like listening to an 8-bit demake of Earthbound's music, except nothing is lost in the translation to 8-bits because 8-bits 
is how it all began. However, it should be noted that the Game Boy Advance release of Mother doesn't utilize that iconic NES sound chip, and that music may not sound nearly as sweet at times as I discovered while playing that version of the game. This brings me to the big question. Right now, we're spoiled for choice on how best to play Mother. What version do I recommend? As with all of life's tough questions, the answer to this one is that it depends. So let me lay it out like this. Earthbound Beginnings on the Wii U is the game everyone should buy. As I said before, this is the only way to show Nintendo that we have money that we're willing to spend on the Mother franchise. But who should play Earthbound Beginnings? Simply put, purists who want to experience the game as it originally was, flaws and all, like an archaeologist would inspect an artifact for historical purposes. The Mother 1 fan translation on Game Boy Advance is probably what I would recommend to purists who want a more accurate translation of the game and don't want to experience the game through the lens of Nintendo of America's censorship guidelines of the era. However, the poor sound quality may be a hang-up. If you're the kind of person who plays games while listening to Spotify, podcasts, or listening to an RPG streamer on Twitch with a silky smooth radio voice and swoopy hair, you know who you are, this may not be so much of a problem for you. And Mother 25th Anniversary Edition is what I would recommend to fans of Earthbound who just want to enjoy going back to experience Mother and come away with an overall positive experience. And that includes people like me. Back in the early aughts, I tried playing Earthbound Zero for the first time on an emulator after learning about it, and I hate to say that I did not get very far at all. But this was long before I had broadened my horizons and reviewed 99 other RPGs, and before I had honed my skills as an RPG player. I was a filthy casual, and I dropped the game before I even received the second melody. So coming back to Mother after all these years, I decided that this time, I wanted to be sure that I fell in love with this game this time. So I played the 25th Anniversary Edition to help make sure that happened. And you know what? It did. And not only did I come away with Mother with a far greater appreciation for it, but I also was able to go back and immediately enjoy my time playing Earthbound Beginnings immediately afterward. Mother 25th Anniversary Edition is a fan hack, a side make, if you will, that helped me find one of my favorite NES RPGs. And that's why I would recommend this version to anyone who isn't turned off by the enhanced visuals. It has a more accurate fan translation, the built-in rebalancing, the original glorious audio. It's pretty much the best of all worlds, and that's why Mother has handily earned itself a spot in the Game Collection. The Game Collection is a viewer-supported show. If you enjoyed this review, please consider subscribing. For live streams of my playthroughs, follow me on Twitch. And thank you for watching.